Wherever you are in the world, welcome to Bales and Buzzers. Hello everyone and welcome along to Bales and Buzzers. I'm Robbo, Bales is here, welcome. Thanks Robbo. Well, a disappointing, but I guess not surprising outcome of the South Africa uh, game with Ireland, but um, where does that leave us now, mate? Yeah, I think as you said, it wasn't surprising, but maybe the manner of defeat, um, you know, caught a lot of people out. They, you know, would think our quarterfinal bid is derailed now, uh, but it certainly isn't. Obviously this big game against Zimbabwe coming on Saturday morning, um, I don't think, you know, it's obviously a massive game in the context of Pool B, but again, if we do lose it, hopefully not. If we do want to lose it, you know, there's still hope of getting through. You know, beating Pakistan, the final game, would potentially, you know, put us through because that would knock Pakistan out. And But that, again, it's all depending on the other results going our way. So there's a lot still to happen, and I think it gets quite complicated if you go into it. But, yeah. you know, I think, yeah, win two games and we're sorted. Yep. Pakistan must be sick of the sight of us, really. You know, yeah. like they'd be here thinking again. If the, if they're going to miss out, it's probably going to be at our expense. Yeah. So uh, it's a it's a terrific rivalry that's uh, built up between the two over the last number of years, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Like I, if anyone was at Clontarf, I think it was two years ago. You know, we had those two ODIs against them, and you know they're really fiercely competitive games. And Pakistan just got over the line in the second one. It was a tie in the first one. So yeah, we've we've had a good rivalry down the years, and. You know, it's all building up to a nice crescendo now. That last game, the very last game of the group stages, Ireland and Pakistan could arguably be for that last fourth qualifying spot. So, yeah. Well, I guess before that, we've got to take each game as it comes. Zimbabwe, the next game, it's going to be a big one. PJ Moore from Zimbabwe, of course, played for YMCA in Leinster last season. Uh, he's going to join us in just a tick. But just before we go to that, the other performance, of course, was Australia. Uh, 417 new records left, right and centre. Uh, that was some performance. The, You know, it must be terribly tough. And, and Ireland would have been in the same boat. You know, when the opening batsman, you can back your, you can back your, bowl, uh, your batsman all the way home. But when you're walking out to the centre with your bat under your arm and you look up and you're seeing like 412 or 417 up there, it must be very, very tough. Yeah, when you have Mitchell Stark coming at you from first ball, you know, about 150 kilometres an hour, you know. <laughs> See, that's what happens, folks, when you're on a budget. Cheap set. <laughs> yeah, what, what can I say? <laughs> uh, yeah, so 150. I think you're safe there, by the way. There's nothing about to fall down from no. the roof, so you're okay. Keep going. Yeah, so when you have Mitchell Stark coming at you straight away, when you're chasing what 418 or something, yeah. bottom 150 clicks, it's yeah. impo like it's nearly impossible. Yeah. Um, and then you know Johnson, no, but just yeah, Afghanistan, they did well in, in the end. So yeah, they did. Ahead of Ireland's crunch game against Zimbabwe on Saturday, we're delighted to be joined on the phone by Zimbabwean international PJ Moore. PJ, how's it going? Good, thanks. How you guys? Now obviously the build-up here in Ireland is big and the hype ahead of this match is huge, but how's the, the mood and the atmosphere like in Zimbabwe? Uh, I think everybody in Zimbabwe is excited for the game, just as much as you guys. Obviously it's a crunch game for us as well. Um, but just being around some of the domestic cricketers, I think everyone is secretly confident going into the game against Ireland. What's the feeling uh, with the performance of Zimbabwe so far in the World Cup? Well, I think after the dismal tour to Bangladesh, everyone was a bit skeptical about how we would perform but um, although we haven't won the crunch games we would have liked to have won against West Indies and Pakistan I think everybody is quite happy with how we're doing obviously it would have been better to have won those games there yeah you mentioned the tour of Bangladesh there you made your ODI debut in Dhaka in November how was that experience for you uh, it was unbelievable um, to be honest I was quite shocked that I got the chance obviously coming back from Ireland I was just looking forward to playing domestic cricket and fortunately, I did well in my in the two trial games leading up to the Bangladesh tour. And the experience in Bangladesh was unbelievable. I cherished it very much. Now, you've had that taste of uh, international cricket with Zimbabwe. Are you confident that you uh, will make your way back into the team in the future? You're only, what, 24? You're a, you're a young fella. <laughs> well, I hope so. Um, I was a bit disappointed to have been left out of the World Cup squad, but my performances haven't been... Um, worthy of selection in the last few months. 
but yeah, I'm definitely confident to get back into the Zimbabwe team in the coming in the coming years, and hopefully, I can have a long career with Zimbabwe. Yeah, and PJ, obviously, you kept wicked in the, that series against Bangladesh. With Brendan Taylor sort of labelled as a as a part time keeper, is that sort of the role you see yourself uh, occupying in in the Zimbabwean team going forward? Um, obviously, just to get a place in the Zimbabwe side anywhere, I'll be happy. But if it, if it means I have to keep wicked or be labelled a part time keeper, if that's going to get me a, a place in the side, then then obviously we're all competing for places. But I'd like to play alongside Brendan, to be honest, and hopefully one of us can keep. After the World Cup finishes, what are the next opportunities for you with the Zimbabwean side? Um, from what I gather, India are coming in July and New Zealand come to Zimbabwe in August. So there's two tours coming up, both at home. Yeah, and just looking forward to Saturday's game again, PJ. Um, who should the Irish be looking out for on the Zimbabwean team? Uh, well, as in the threats from the Zimbabwe side? Yeah. I will definitely have to say Sean Williams. He seems like he's... he's um, in good form at the moment. Uh, obviously, Brendan Taylor is a, is a class player, as we all know. So if he fires, then Zimbabwe had every chance of winning. But I think our two, our two biggest assets at the moment are our opening bowlers. They've been bowling very well recently. So I think that's uh, that's something that the Irish, is a big challenge the Irish are going to have to face. And putting emotion aside for a moment, um, how do you rate the game? Who do you think? Uh, you know, you're backing Zimbabwe to win, or do you think uh, it's fairly even? Well, it's a difficult one because obviously my alliance is with Zimbabwe, and I have to support them, and I do support them. And but uh, I do know that Irish cricket is uh, on the up, and I've always wished the best for Irish cricket. So I have to say, I think Zimbabwe are going to win this one. Although I do want Irish cricket to do well in the future. And PJ, just suppose um, from a Zimbabwean point of view, how do they view Irish cricket as a whole? Um, I think everybody wants the best for world cricket. I know Ireland, like just looking at the next World Cup, for example, it's probably going to be us and Ireland and a few of the other associate teams vying for those two spots if they do go ahead with this plan. So I think that, you know, for the, for the sake of world cricket, everyone, we, like a game like this, Ireland versus Zimbabwe, is just as exciting as two of the powerhouses of world cricket playing. So I think in Zimbabwe, everybody wishes or wants to see the more associate games and, and Ireland doing well in Afghanistan and teams like that. Now, uh, PJ, um, are, are, you, are we going to see you back in these sunny shores uh, in, in coming seasons? <laughs> I hope so. Um, I've been talking a bit to IM and I'm hoping that I can come over. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, and PJ, how did you find um, your experience in Ireland last year? Obviously, you were playing for YM and you got a taste of what Irish cricket was like. Oh, I absolutely loved it. Um, obviously, I was up north for two seasons, and I think I learned quite a bit up there, but I, I really loved uh, my time at Lent, in the Leinster League and playing for YM. Uh, it was definitely one of the best summers that I've had in terms of on and off the field activities. The, the people in my team were great fun. The family I lived with were, were, were very good to me. Um, and all in all, I absolutely loved my summer over there. So hopefully, I'll definitely be back. Well, we'll leave the uh, stories about the off-the-field uh, enjoyment alone, PJ, so <laughs> your secret's safe with us, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Hey, listen, thanks so much for talking to us. Um, it's going to be a fascinating game, and um, we do hope we see you back here in Ireland. We appreciate your insight, and all the yeah. very best to you in getting back into the Zimbabwean team as well. Oh, cheers, guys. Thanks a lot for having me on the show. PJ Moore, Zimbabwean International, joining us here on Bales and Buzzers. Well, there you go, PJ Moore. That was good. Yeah, really yeah, good, yeah. yeah. Um, before we go, you got some tweets for us there, Bob? Yeah, obviously the Irish squad are in transit again from yeah. uh, from Canberra to Hobart, and they're going to be doing a lot of travelling over the next few days. The games are coming thick and fast. Just an interesting one from Brendan Connor, who's the Irish strength and conditioning coach. He said, uh, this morning, on way to Hobart now, and the cycle begins again, building up to the game versus Zimbabwe on Saturday. And it's so really interesting because, you know, it just they're constantly repeating the same process, you know, yeah. Uh, researching the opposition, going through the exact same process over and over again, which is yeah, obviously is. that has to be done. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Phil Simmons as well, the coach, well beaten by uh, official South Africa, but we fought all the way. Hashtag next match, please. And obviously that next match is is the big one, and it's going to be it's going to be a pretty pivotal Can't in Pool wait. B. Yep, absolutely. Uh, now, before we go, if you do want to contact us, because we would love to hear from you, uh, it's very simple. Just uh, tweet us at the Slog Sweep, or you can go to theslogsweep.com, or go to the Slog Sweep uh, to sorry Facebook forward slash 
the slog sweep. So they are the best ways to get in touch with us. Hope you've enjoyed the show and we look forward to coming to you again very soon. All the very best to Ireland for Friday and uh, there'll be a lot of tired people Saturday. Let's hope we're happy as yes. well as tired. Bye for now.